All right, we're going to look at a few simple examples of functions in this video. Um, just to kind of expand on this definition, get a little bit better feel um, for, for what this definition is saying, what does it mean for something to be a function. Um, so here's an example, um, and here's one where we're just going to explicitly construct a function. So we're going to say a, a is going to be the set containing the letters 1, 2, 3, B is going to be the set containing letters, um, let's say, A and B. And I'm just going to define my function like this. And there's a few ways that we could do this. So one of the ways we could do it is we could just visually represent this by saying, okay, here's A, here's B. Okay, so we just kind of draw those two sets. And... We're going to mark off 1, 2, 3. We're going to mark off A, B. And we're going to specify the function by just saying, you know, what goes where, right? So we could do something like this. We could send 1 to A, okay? We could do that. I could send 2. Maybe 2 goes to B. Okay, we could do something like that. Um, now, if I stop here, I haven't actually defined a function because one of the conditions for a function is that every element of the domain has to be assigned. Um, so until I send this 3 somewhere, I don't have a function. So maybe we send 3, maybe we send that to A as well. Okay, so we have, uh, we have a function, right? Now, you might be concerned <coughs> that there are two different elements of the domain that both get sent to A. This is okay. All right, you're allowed to have this in a function. What you can't have is if I had one, if I had two different arrows coming out, so if one went to both A and B, I would not have a function. So for any element in the domain, you can only have one outgoing arrow, um, but in the codomain, you can have more than one incoming arrow, right? So it's okay that I have two arrows going into A. It would only be a problem if I had two arrows coming out from one of these elements. Okay? So this has a function, right? Um, this, or sorry, this defines a function. Um, this property, if you are concerned about this, this is where this, this notion of a function being one-to-one -one comes in, and we might talk about that later on, right? Um, now, another notation you're probably familiar with is that if you have an element A assigned to an element B, um, then usually what you do is you would write this, you would express this by saying that B is equal to F of A, right? So over here in this context, one of the ways I could define my function, I can completely define my function by just, again, saying what happens to every input, right? Once every possible input has been assigned to an output, my function is defined. So I could say f of 1 equals a, f of 2 equals b, f of 3 equals a. So if I simply gave you that information, that again would be enough to define a function. Okay? Um, this is fine. All right. Now, of course, a lot of the time, we're dealing with uh, examples like the ones that we had up here a second ago where A is going to be the set of all real numbers. Maybe B is, well, it could, let's, let's say B is going to be the numbers from 0 to infinity. Could be all real numbers. And, and let's say I define f from a to b is going to be defined um, with the following formula. We say simply f of x equals x squared, right? So this notation, right, is being used here. So what it's saying is that x in this case, this x, right, this is my input. It's what I called A over there, 
right? So this is an element of R of A, right? This x squared, that's my output. So that's an element of B, right? Um, we know that if you square a real number, the result is never negative. So this is indeed an element of that set B, right? OK, so again, that's another example of a function. Um, but you know, there, there are many more examples. We could go with something like, like the following. We could say, so we might write down, so here's something you might see in like a, a third or fourth course in calculus. You might see something like f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. Right? So you have, it looks like you have two inputs, right? There's an x and a y. Um, this is, in, in calculus, we usually refer to this as a function of several variables. Um, but we can always think of the input here as the ordered pair, which is an element of the plane of R2, right? And the output would be this number, x squared plus y squared which is an element of R, right? Um, of course, it's also an element, you know, again, this is not, never negative, so we could go with 0 to infinity if you want. Um, there's no requirement, though, that your function hits every element of the codomain, right? Um, so you can always make the, you can talk about this distinction between range versus codomain, right? The range is the set of all outputs that your function has, right? Um, so here we might say, well, that's, so the codomain is R, but the range is the set of real numbers from 0 to infinity. Um, you can make this distinction between range and codomain. Um, when the range equals the codomain, there's a word for that. You can talk about a function being onto. Um, onto functions are usually not discussed in calculus. Um, the only place where you might have to think about it a little bit is when you talk about inverse functions. And even there, you can usually kind of gloss around. Um, generally, what you do is you just kind of assume that the codomain is the same as the range. This is something you can usually get away with in calculus. Um, OK, so there's a few simple examples of, of functions. We'll look at some more calculus-focused ones in later videos. Um, but you know, just, just to press home that this fact that, or this idea that you know, this definition of function, it's very broad. You can look at all kinds of different scenarios. You could look at something where um, maybe, maybe you take A and B to be something like, uh, I don't know, the, the set of all, let's say, female humans. And the relationship is, is mother to daughter. And you could ask, is that a function? Well. That's not necessarily going to be a function because there are some mothers who have more than one daughter, right? So you might have um, two, well, I don't know, it seems crude to call this an output now, but two outputs for a given input. Um, on the other hand, um, any given daughter has only one biological mother. Um, I guess, well, you know, I don't know, these days. So, so you, you could go in the other way and say that is indeed a function, going in the other direction. Um, so th there's lots of different scenarios like that that you could consider, um, but we'll typically be looking at you know objects like this most of the time when we talk about functions.